This podcast contains adult themes, sexual content, and strong language. If you can't handle that, you should probably leave. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. Yeah, it. stop talking about it and do it. You do it. I like when you do it. I don't know what it's about. You I haven't it read it. So good. So we're back for another episode of Bustles and Bangers with your hosts Rachel and Christopher. And you whisper my name a few times in a row now. Oh my God, so many, so many. Last night was wild. Mm-hmm. What's tonight gonna be like? Now we got tequila in the system. <laughs> Snoozing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. We went to the gym for so long. Okay. So. And then we had a burger and we're drinking tequila. Oh my God. Well, I Nothing had to settle sandwich. a belly full of burgers. I had a chicky sandwich. Like some tequila. All right. So listen, I wanted to do something special for you today because even though this episode. Wait, special for me or for them? For you. This oh. is all about you, baby. Our listeners are just voyeurs. <laughs> it's oh. you and me in the room. All right. Well, so, um, and I don't know if they're going to want to split this. Um, You're holding two books. I know. Isn't it sexy? Mm, it's getting freaky in here. Double fisted it. <laughs> so many ladies. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, I don't know if they want to split this recording up, but this is technically a recording for the first episode of a book called Worth the Wait by Catherine Atala. Catherine Atala, yes. worth the wait. Mm-hmm. But, 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 we just got done with the billionaire's baby negotiation. Mm-hmm. We did. Yeah. Pretty lame and intense. Intensely lame. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and so, but I wanted to wrap it up for you. I wanted wrap to wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. No, all right. Um, so I wanted to read you the epilogue. Well, tell me, so this book has ended three fucking times already, <laughs> so I guess here's I another know, one. I wanted you to have Sur- alternative Surprise, endings. there's another ending to this well, book. Well, and let's, let's get on some seasonal shit. It was Christmas, their favorite time of year. Do you think it's because it's cold? <laughs> no, it's be No, <laughs> Man, I don't know. Because <laughs> he was Iceland. I'm not a Christmas fan. Snow fell outside and everybody was tucked up in their little beds beneath handmade quilts. The fire was going and he knew from experience that smoke from the small stovepipe chimney was pouring into the frigid air. The cabin was their Christmas tradition and they all loved it, including the kids. Oh, kids. Ah, yeah. I knew it. It was smaller than their other homes throughout the world. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? But <laughs> how, how, how oh, I got lost throughout the world. But it would always be the most special home, the most real. He and Olive mm. did not work so much these days, delegating various tasks to other people of the company. What Olive had decided to do was not start a company at all. She had started writing children's books. Of course. Her particular brand of ridiculous humor and banter, creating a series of exceedingly popular works about a young girl who had to spend her days in office buildings while her dad had meetings. Oh, that seems so riveting. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Must be easy to write What's when it's her actually name? your life story. Olive? You didn't have to think of anything new at all you just wrote what happened to you in a cute way <laughs> way to work the trauma i wonder what the title was it was like the young cfo the boring childhood i don't oh, know i don't like it all right well the daughter and diamonds all right uh but he would have loved her whatever she did because she was his because she had given him his home back He looked at the Christmas tree in the corner and the sleeping children in their beds. She had given him his heart back. The end. That was the worst ending. That was the the worst of the endings of the book. (laughs) Of all the books. No, Uh, no, 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 this one was the worst. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I liked the first ending the best because it was the one it I was looking forward to. Well, yeah. How was and then it was full of a bunch of disappointment because it wasn't over. I know. I'm 
so sorry. Is it really over this time? It's over. I won't read to you ever again anything. Uh, ever again by Millie Adams called the Billionaire's Baby Negotiation. All right. Is but, there a sequel? Do we know? No. Mm-mm. No. That's about the children growing epilogue. up and having. No, get off it. Okay. Saint Twilight. All right. <laughs> so now moving on. Worth the Wait by I, Catherine Atala. I can't wait. <clears throat> Episode one. Chapter one. <laughs> and then we're mixing up some heat, it says here. Oh, I just wanted to mention who um, Catherine dedicated this book to. Oh, is this somebody I'm going to know? No. <laughs> like, personally? Why yes. are you telling me this? Just because the way... She, oh, okay. Tell me. Well, it's just for my husband, my father, and my brother. The three alpha male role models in my life. No. Okay. Which one's the most alpha mm. of the alphas? She listed husband first, then brother. Or, no, then father, then brother. But I just feel like there is such a heavy connection to family in all these books. Well, there's a lot of family connection to porn these days, too. I know. Uh, why can't we get away from yeah, that? Yeah, people fucking their stephusbands uh, and stuff all the time. So weird. Weird. I have to do so much <laughs> skimming now. It's ridiculous. So, chapter one. Are you listening to me? Nope. Da- <laughs> <laughs> Damien Westfield glanced up from the financial. <sighs> these names. <laughs> Holy shit. No, you have no idea. There are so many names in this book starting out. Remember that one book we reread? Oh, I don't even remember the name of it now, but it was like about golfer, the Texas. Damien. This is about the Texas love or something like that. And they had like all these names at the beginning and then none of the characters lasted throughout the book. That was one pink rose. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You had all the characters in the beginning. Oh, uh, this is a series, though. And I'm supposed to be like, we're going to read the uh, rest yeah, of the Yeah, there's <laughs> I need to know about the... Uh, the rest of the brothers. The rest Runaway of, slave Adam. Yes. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> He's going to be... It's a shame awesome, we had to read dude. about Travis. Yeah, right. his, his sucks. <clears throat> well, I mean, it was better than a sum, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Damien Westfield glanced up from the financial reports as though his mother could see through the telephone wire. What were you saying? Has Eric ever mentioned this Charlie fellow to you? Charlie who? I don't know. Every time I call the dorm, they say he's out with Charlie. (laughs) Damien returned his attention to the reports on his lap. Why did he bother calling? She never did anything but complain. I assume he's one of Eric's classmates. Monica Lawson went right on as though he hadn't spoken. And there's another thing that concerns me. So now we have another name. Damien Westfield, Monica Lawson, Lawson. Lawson. Now we have Cynthia Farnsworth. Mm-hmm. Eric hasn't called Cynthia Farnsworth in over a month. She literally wrote this out as if the mother used the girl's first and last name during the statement on her phone call. That's weird. Eric hasn't called Cynthia Farnsworth in over a month. That's weird. You don't say that. That's weird. All right. So he reminds his mother that he's prepping for final exams. He hasn't got time to run home. And Wait, takes who, Cynthia who out. Is? The Eric, the Eric. kid there. She's like, "Why hasn't he called?" Okay, and he's like, "He's out studying for exams. He needs a degree if he's going to be able to support her when they get married." Okay, so, so we're in one of these types of families. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You have to go to college. This is how he, you want to know a little bit about these types of families. He could hear his mother take a sip of mineral water as she Ugh. answered, "I suppose you're right." But so I think if y'all want to hear a Christopher fun fact, <laughs> I hate. Mineral, mineral water. water. Mineral so water. Gross. It sounds bad. I hate it's it. weird. That's not sparkling water, though. That's different. From oh, sparkling. is it? Well, I is it? Know, is mineral water sparkling water? I don't think so. It's sparkling water is one I don't like. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I'm asking. No, I don't know either. Maybe, well, maybe somebody I'm dumb. educate us. Find, I mean, I know I'm dumb. Find but. our social media and comment and tell us. Maybe I'll post with our water today. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. right here. This is our mineral water. It's kind of dirty. Tequila. It's like piss, piss colored. That's the minerals. Jose Cuervo water. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor us. All right. So <sighs> he agrees to stop by to check on him. He has a meeting Saturday morning, but he'll be back in time for his mother's party. The silver sports car bucked like a wild horse before grinding to an unnatural death. A noxious odor of exhaust filtered in through the window. Eric shot the driver an annoyed scowl and let out a grunt. Damn it, Charlie. I just had a new clutch put in last week. I said ease off the clutch and slowly give it gas, not stomp on it like an elephant. Charlie raised her nose in the air and glowered indignantly. Glowered? Glowered? Glowered. Glowered. 
With her eyes? Glower. Is that something you do with your eyes? Glowering. Indignantly. I have no idea what that means. Then her lips twitched and she broke out in a smile. I did ease off the clutch. No, you didn't or it wouldn't have stalled again. She smacked her hands against the wheel and slumped her shoulders. Face it, Eric. I'm never going to learn how to drive a stick shift. And what's the point? He says, someday you might come into a little red Ferrari. No. Charlie choked back a laugh as she glanced down at her faded jeans and worn motorcycle jacket. A Ferrari? She couldn't afford the insurance on the damn thing. She was lucky she had a bicycle, and she'd bought that at a garage sale. Uh, lottery tickets change lives, girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so apparently they've been doing this for the last six months. Holy shit. This argument every yes. day? Yeah. <laughs> the driving thing. Right. Um. Oh, that she's learning how to drive. Right. Six months. Well, a stick shift, I guess. It's taken her six months. Yeah. No, Maybe he needs it's to the give time. up on this. It's Buy an automatic time. and just chalk it up to <laughs> what she's. Mm -mm. I don't know if she's driving. We don't even Is know she why she's learning. We don't even know why she's learning right now. Hold on. Eric massaged his temples. Their constant bickering on this subject always seemed to give him a headache. It's not like we're strangers, Charlie. You're my half sister. Wait, no. I don't want. Is this where we're going with this? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I was a we can pretend this is a Ferrari. <laughs> stop. I was Wait, a stranger no, stop. to I'm you. your sister. And he's like, only, <laughs> only by like Only our over the state me. line. So, yeah. All right. I was a stranger to you when you started paying my tuition. Oh, That's oh. what she's saying to him. <laughs> as she pushed back a strand of her curly hair and sighed. And you would have. So she's like, only when you paid my tuition. <laughs> Uh, and you would have been perfectly happy to remain as such. Look at us now, siblings and best friends. Uh huh. Are they getting ready to cross a third line there? I don't know. Hold this, on. I just Slow close down. This, just turn Haas. this one off. This Slow is inappropriate. Down. No, I've already gotten through this. Okay, it's not what you think it is, but I knew you would think it was something. We need so to change hold on. the channel. It gets. It's weird, <laughs> but it's not that weird. Oh, okay. All right. Hold on. To being weird. Oh, I fucking love being weird, but I gotta get all set up. Man, it takes you forever. Uh, Priceline presents Go to Your Happy Price. What's up? It's Kaylee Cuoco. When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. You can see yourself already there. It's beautiful. It might be sunny and sandy for some, neon and urban for others, deserts or rainforests or hiking trails. With Priceline, you can get to your happy place for a happy price with deals you really can't find anywhere else. Like up to 60% off select hotels to Costa Rica or five-star hotels for two-star prices in Cabo. Go to Priceline.com and travel to your happy place for a happy price. All right, see ya. I'm off to Miami. No, actually, wow, look at that. No, I I'm going to Hawaii now. Ooh, Cancun looks nice. You know what? Belize looks pretty nice this time of year. Or, mmm, Palm Springs. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. That's gonna get cut out, but like, hey, we hey, care. word to the liquor stores be a sponsor for our podcast. You could do a little commercial, and I could talk about your tequila. And if you sponsor us, we could purchase more tequila. We would love to purchase more tequila. You could give us tequila free, and we'll just do a little taste test. <laughs> All right, so where were we? Don't take it personally, Eric. No one wants their wimpy little brother hanging around them in college. So they're both in so college. They're in college. It's a half sister, half brother. They're teaching each on which other side to does drive. It say? Uh, well, it says later, but okay, like, we'll wanna, get there. I want to get there. Right. Um, so he says to her, Eric shrugged, apparently undisturbed. His solid six foot frame was anything but wimpy. I can always trade cars with Damien for the day, and you can take that. Who's Damien? I forgot. Remember, the mother was on the phone with Damien, and Damien is supposed to check on Eric. So that means that Damien is Eric's brother, as far as we know. Whether it's a half brother or. But Eric's a kid brother, in the car right now talking. Eric is talking to Charlie. Charlie is. His sister. Half sister. Yeah, we need to emphasize keep the it, half. Keep it, yeah. Otherwise, things will get too keep it inappropriate. Keep classy. All because right. if he fucks his sister, that's no. too much. 
All right, so Damien, he says he could borrow something from Damien, and she's like, oh, my God, you know, no way, or whatever. Um, she says, I can always take the bus. I am your older sister, for goodness sakes. Mm-hmm. Um, they're talking about some other bullshit. Oh, but there's a statement I needed you to know that they said. I, I can't wait. We've been in this parking lot for an hour, and we've moved precisely 10 feet. You drive. When you go down on bent knees and admit that this is something a man does better than a woman. Oh, shit. Here it comes. Mm. I've seen how this starts. A challenge like that was tantamount to waving a red cape in front of a bull. If she didn't get the car moving, Eric would mock her for the rest of the week. So, no, she does not get down on bent knees for her half-brother, Eric. Sorry. Damien really had no intention of going down to the university, but his mother called every day to nag him until he gave in. Friday was party night on campus, and the dorms were filled to the seams with students and visitors alike. He knocked on the door to Eric's room and waited. A distinct odor of marijuana Marijuana? lingered in the halls, and he half prayed that his brother was nowhere in the vicinity. Lame. You better not be smoking pot, brother. You're boring, Damien. All right, Eric's roommate, wearing only a sheet, answered the door. Where was the sheet on this body? We don't know. It could have been over his head. It's a yoga party? All animal, naked. Animal house knockoff? Maybe. I don't Are you ready? Know. No, just wearing a sheet. I think okay. just covered up in a sheet, right? Because he says, Eric's not here. Damien glanced over the man's shoulder towards the silhouette in the darkened room. Mm -hmm. He must have come at an inopportune moment. Do you know where I might find him? Try Charlie. And where might I find him? The young man grinned as if something pleased him greatly. He looked towards his giggling girlfriend and then back at Damien, tending bar at the ace in the hole across campus. All right, so now Damien is on his mission to go find Eric but he's got to check in with Charlie. So he, Damien can't be Charlie's brother because he would surely know that Charlie, his sister, right. was a girl. Right. Because if he's looking for right, Eric, he, he would have communicated even at some the mother, point. Even the mother thinks Charlie is a boy. She was like, at this now, Charlie right now? fellow. Yeah. She, on the phone with Damien, she was like, go check on Eric. He's always with this Charlie fellow. So Damien's asking people, where's this Charlie fellow? Okay, so they never met before. Then. Right. All right. Okay, I'm getting pretty All good right. at this. I know, you're doing great. <clears throat> he only saw one bartender, a woman, and she barely looked old enough to be in the bar, let alone serving drinks. Uh, if you're old enough to be in the bar, you're old enough <laughs> to serve drinks, you fucking idiot. Her blue jeans hugged her slim body like a second skin. A white man-style shirt was topped by a brightly colored vest and black bow tie. But I just want you to know, when I was reading this myself, wait, I was like on. a white man style. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you said. I was like, wait, hold on. A white man style shirt i I hope so if he's wearing a white white woman style style. shirt no it's her it's the bartender it's it's oh it's charlie the bartender yeah charlie well don't give any stereotypes man so (laughs) was taught by a brightly colored vest and black bow tie a long mane of ringlets fell down her back swaying as she worked when she raised her head his stare rested on the most compelling eyes he'd ever seen Mm -hmm. wide round and dark as coal May I see some identification, please? Her husky voice requested. May I see some identification, please? (laughs) Of the young boy standing in front of him. The boy searched his wallet. I must have left it in the car. Sure you did. Get your Toys R Us gift card and get the hell out of here. Yeah, so then she turns to Damien. Can I help you? She waves a shot glass in his face. And he's like, sorry, I'm looking for Eric Lawson. Um... She was like, yeah, who's looking? His brother. His brother. The shot glass slipped out of Charlie's hand and landed on the counter. Damien Westfield was the last person she expected to find in the local bar. According to Eric, his half-brother never visited. So it is also Eric's half-brother. Half-brother Eric, half-brother Damien, half-sister. But they're different halves. Right. So he's maternal on one side and paternal on the other side. I only know this because I have half-siblings. Right. Same. Same, same. <clears throat> so, he was apparently every inch the square Eric had painted him, although a heck of a lot sexier than she'd pictured. Oh, dang. Tall and muscular, he filled... He, Not my brother. It's my brother's <laughs> brother. We're in the clear. <laughs> he filled his tailored suit to perfection. He had clean, <laughs> angular features. <laughs> <laughs> Everything sloped. <laughs> <laughs> that made him ruggedly handsome and a hint of aloofness that she supposed some women found intriguing. She found him disconcerting, especially the way he stared at her. Oh. 
She slipped into the back office and dialed her apartment. Slipped in. Now he's asking her to phone his brother. Phone my brother. She said okay. she could make some calls. I can make some calls so to phone your brother. So he walks in, phone my brother, and she goes, I can well, make some calls. No, I All guess right. I skipped the part where he discovered Charlie mm-hmm. was a girl. So it's like, okay. Well, surely he just. She wiped a towel across the oak counter and returned. He's like. I'm looking for Charlie. And she's like, you found her. What can I do for you? Damien shook his head in disbelief. No, the male Charlie. Her sheer beauty took his breath away. She had deepest eyes and delicate nose. And, and deepest a, voice, right? She Husky? Had, oh, it says she had deep set eyes. A delicate nose and a sensual mouth with pink lips ju- just ripe for kissing. Oh. The impact sent a live current of awareness pulsating through him. He could easily see why Eric was never in his room anymore. Because uh, he's trying to fuck his sister? Is that what he's insinuating? He doesn't know. But is that what he's he insinuating? Doesn't know. Yes, but he doesn't know this is Eric's sister. How out of touch is he? So far he knows nothing. How old are these people? College age. This is bullshit, dude. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> Y'all don't talk. So she calls Eric, uh, and she, you know, he says to tell his brother he'll be right there. But Damien busts in, and is uh, like, uh, "Who's that, Charlie Chick?" Let me fight. talk to him. And she's like, "Make it quick." He's like, "I'll be quick." And then he says, "Eric, get your butt down here. I have to speak to you." He set the phone back on the cradle. Get cradle your quick butt enough. Down here. Yeah. So it's mm. like a nineteen sixties. Yeah, this might be a little 80s. They're maybe. like leaning on the bar in their fucking sweater that has a letter on it. And they're He's like, a little greaser. get your butt down here. <laughs> All his friends are like, yeah, and they like give a little skim. I keep know? thinking these guys are uber tough, but I forget sometimes that they might not be. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, um, a, uh, so she's mad at him for that. Charlie? Mad at who? Charlie's mad at Damien for busting in like this and stuff. She's just mad. All right. So she's like, the way he looked her over as if she were standing in a cattle call infuriated her, and his grin of admiration blew what remained of her very short fuse. Have you got a problem? To her further annoyance, he laughed. Why is a shark like you hanging around with Eric? I keep the piranhas away from him. He rested against the desk and smiled. Should we pass the time trading one-liners? Why aren't you capable of a paragraph? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Get, <laughs> oh, here to paragraphs. Dang, I can't do another one. You got yep. wait a second. We haven't even gotten through chapter one. Well, good. We'll give us time to sell it, uh, sober up before we have to get Are into. We go- you know, okay, so anyway, anything else? Um, Eric gets there. And he sits down with his brother. Ever professional, she placed two cocktail napkins down the table and took a small pad from her vest pocket. What can I get you, gentlemen? One martini just stirred. No. Don't shake it, Damien said. No. I said, look, my note says this fucking guy. No. <laughs> this uh, fucking guy. The only reason you ordered that drink is so you can complain about it. Uh, Does he complain about it? Never mind, don't tell me. He's got to <laughs> complain about this fucking drink. I hate people that order martinis, especially with specific instructions. No. Especially, I swear to God, listeners, if you don't go to the bar to get your martini, you better not say anything about the way it got uh, to you. You spilled it. It's in a 179 degree fucking cup. I had cup. to walk a mile to get here. It's almost flat. You saw the girl bump into me. What do you yeah, want me to do? She's wearing heels, you jackass. What do you want me to do? I'm carrying 15 And then he's drinks. like, here, you can have this really cool 50 cent piece as a If tip. y'all can't tell, I worked at a bar and that was a little frustrating situation I got into a couple of times. So, cheers to non- Martini drinkers. Yeah, no. Order it in a regular cup like a man. <laughs> it's a regular cup. It's a regular cup. Martinis and solo cups. Mm. <laughs> that was a little rough. Anyway, I'm just kidding to all you people out there who are drinking martinis. I'm and not. Shit. Come Do catch these thing. fucking hands. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> You're all equal and worthy of love. But I'm going to knock your martini off the fucking table if I see you. <laughs> yeah, especially if you complain about it. Okay. Uh, Dare this give one's... that girl a hard time. <laughs> all right. You didn't make this right. <laughs> so they're bonding and talking and bonding. He says to Eric, how come you never mentioned that Charlie was such a charming young lady? Because she's not charming, Eric. Eric taunted. Charlie made a clicking sound with her tongue and wrinkled her nose at him. You blew it, pal. You are definitely getting the check, and I'll include my 50% tip. Mm -hmm. 
So Damien asked Eric if this is somebody that mother should worry about. Something mother should worry about. So, uh, mother. Uh, he says we're just friends. Um, and he's asking, like, did you forget about mom's party tonight? Are you going to be there? He says he's going to be there. Wait, they're at a sup, bar and there's a party tonight? Tonight. So where? Tonight. what time are I, they at the this bar? Be, look, the bar's open all the and time. And is their mom's party? Okay, but let's say they went to the bar at a normal hour, like five, six, seven. What time's no, mom's party? No, that's not a normal. No, he went down there earlier in the day and he made Eric come to the bar because he went looking for Charlie. So this so, could be in the morning because remember the guy answered in a sheet. It's Friday. They probably woke up. At had college. Some morning sex. Mm, don't you love morning sex? Oh, hell yeah, I love morning sex. Mm. I just like sex. It can be any time. I know, but mornings are nice. Are they? Yeah, when it's quiet in the house and like you just woke up and you're touching on me. Hell yeah. <sighs> it has to be quiet in the house, though. All right, so. So, Damien invites Charlie to the party. To mom's, to, to mom's party. His mom's party. To mom's party, right? And she's like, no, 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 that's fine. Because the mom will be like, hey, Charlie, how's Eric, your well, brother? I, we don't know. No, we don't know. Somebody's got to Mother know. didn't even know Charlie was a girl. The mother does not know Charlie. How does she have a son and she doesn't know that you he has a half-sister? You have to sit in the ride. Stay put, sir. All right. <sighs> Catherine, think about it, Damien. What, what was your room? What was your childhood like? Think about it, Damien. What would the Farnsworths think if I showed up with Charlie? Eric asked. Damien paused. Is that the problem? She can go as my date. In spite of her turmoil, Charlie laughed. That offer tempted the spiteful little brat inside her. Wouldn't Monica Lawson have one heck of a birthday to surprise if the daughter of her husband's mistress showed up on the arm of her sexy older son? <laughs> so Charlie is a Child byproduct of, of a little infidelity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Eric knows. Eric knows, but yes. nobody else knows. No, no. Now, so no, she's now like, when I'm going to go. No one else knows. Like to what extent you don't know yet? To what extent some people might know something. Is Charlie going to murder somebody in this book? I don't know. I've gotten to the third chapter. Okay, so far. I'm going to say. Charlie's going to kill somebody in this book. <laughs> okay. We're in chapter I called it last time on right. the suicide. You remember that? Slow down, Speedy. I called the suicide. All right. Well, listen. What was that book? That was our first one. Uh, Two-timing man. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't right. a suicide. It was an attempt. That was pretty close. Yeah. Close enough. She walked into traffic. She tried to kill herself. Yeah. Y'all listen. If you're a new listener, these books get really exciting even when, when, when they're not really exciting. So you should definitely go back and listen to some if you haven't. And it usually, usually happens out of nowhere, too. Yeah, so it's, it's like, fun. whoa, uh, yeah. what's going on? All right, so kind of like just now. Whoa, what's going on? So the mistress baby and blah, blah, blah. Mistress baby. Mistress okay. baby. All right, so she's trying to get out of going to this party. Well, pompous ass Damien goes to her boss, talks to him, hands him money, comes back over. Oh, and at one point, Eric even, you know, bet him money she wouldn't go or something. He's like, you also owe me money. He said he'll see you both tomorrow that she's expected at the party. Her day is paid for and she'll she'll be off with pay. With pay. So. He, he just it. paid it. Like he paid, he paid the paid. manager. Right. Her salary probably enough to cover all that. Yeah. So he, he's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot. Yep. Good job. Yep. Charlie and Eric exchanged shocked stares. She tried to say something, but Barry called her. The deal is for tomorrow, Charlie. Get behind the bar. So she's back to work. Okay, but now <laughs> we move on. You're not off till tomorrow. Get the hey, hell back back here. Hey, bitch. <laughs> what are you doing? Quit talking more porn. <laughs> this is pimp Barry. Dang. Barry the pimp. All right, so chapter two. Damien Westfield had to be out of his mind. He had actually paid her boss $200 in cash to give her the night off. Not enough. All right. Um, so Eric picked her up at 5 o'clock, apparently too preoccupied to notice that over the black strapless evening dress, she wore her leather jacket and with it a pair of red high top sneakers. Hell yeah. So if that gives you a visual for where we're at type of people. Um, they said, it's kind of ironic in a way my half brother going on a date with my half sister. 
Is that ironic or uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weird. So I'm going to my brother's wedding. It's my sister. Yeah, what do you have to request <laughs> off? Who do you, whose wedding do you request off for? Your brother's wedding or your sister's wedding? It's a family affair. It's a, <laughs> it, yeah, for real. That was a good pun. Uh, I liked thanks. it. <laughs> Holy shit. And he's all right. like all sad because he's like, man, I really wanted to fuck her. Well, here's what they say. This whole shit is weird, dude. Here's what Damien says. Or no, sorry, Charlie. Well, he and I aren't related. We have different parents all together, and I can't figure out why he wants me to go to the party anyway. All I did was insult him when we met. I know he's not your first choice for a date, but Damien is okay. He'd never hurt you. Damien I can handle, but I'm not in a hurry to meet your mother. Hopefully your name will not mean anything to her. She wasn't aware of my father's journals. Okay, Monica might not be aware of the journals, but she might have been aware of her husband's child by his mistress. When Charlie left the orphanage, she'd begun using her mother's surname rather than Lawson, the name on her birth certificate. So she took her mother's last name, so she has since introduced herself to people with that last name. So So Eric and <clears throat> Dingleberry are yeah. not brothers. They are. Half he just said they don't have this. Charlie said to Eric that her and Damien have okay. yeah. separate parents altogether because her dad was his mom's second husband. No, I understand now. And she has a different mother. So so technically, this is not too gross. It's mostly Not for anybody weird. but Eric. Eric, yeah. It's mostly weird for Eric. But it seems like Eric also just recently got to know Charlie during like the college era. So also it's like, mm, is she more friend and less sister at this point? So it's not too weird. So everybody just relax. It's okay. Let's keep going. Let's just keep going. If anyone back in Ohio had told her she'd be in this position right now, she would have laughed. She was offered a scholarship to Rutgers University in New Jersey. It seemed like a dream when she transferred. Eric introduced himself, and she realized he was the one paying for the scholarship. So Eric found her, paid for a scholarship to get to college, and then went and introduced himself. So that's how they became of knowing each other. Mm -hmm. um, that's also something I think she gives him a hard time Because just like about. knocking on the door and saying hi would have been too much. So, so um, now they're at the party, right? Okay. They were greeted at the door by a butler. He took her jacket and held it away from himself as if it bore some kind of deadly germ. This evening promised to be the longest few hours of her life. If the butler had an attitude, what were the friends of Monica Lawson like? Your mother is already at the club overseeing the arrangements, the butler informed Eric. Your brother is waiting in the living room. Oh, rapture. Lord Damien is awaiting our arrival, Charlie said. Shall we join him for drinks, Master Eric? Why, yes, Mistress Charlotte. Let's do. I think she should have been more offended at that statement. Was she offended at all? No. No. <laughs> So Damien stood up to greet the arrivals. He took one look at her red sneakers and let out a laugh. They clash with the outfit. I know, but the maid forgot to pack my black high tops. I had thought to stop at Gucci's for matching red purse, but I left my gold card at the polo club and they wouldn't take my personal check. He said, you should have used my name. I would have vouched for you. It's so gosh to name drop. Damien shook his head and grinned. Charlie, Eric has told me nothing about you. What is your real name? He held up a bottle of wine for her approval. I don't drink, and my name is Charlotte. Does that come with a last name, or do you fancy yourself another Madonna? She crinkled her button nose and smiled. Please, I wear my lingerie under my clothing, not over it, and my last name is Simone. French? No, American. He offered her glass of mineral water. How old are you? She <laughs> took the glass. The all-important question. And raised it in a salute of thanks. How ungentlemanly to ask a lady her age. I didn't think you'd reach the age where it mattered yet, he said smoothly. Charlie feigned shock. A lady who tells her age will tell anything. Let's just say that I'm not breaking any laws by working in a bar. Charlie glanced at Damien over the rim of her glass. His charcoal gray suit was tailored to fit his tall, lean body. The fine quality of the garment must have set him back more than she paid in a year's rent. His square jaw, straight nose, and wide slashed mouth <laughs> raised. <laughs> this sounds like a Canadian on South <laughs> it's Park. It's like a square, <laughs> like it's a 2D doodle. <laughs> Get <on that>. Um. <laughs> 
left her feeling he might be more dangerous than his polished appearance had first led her believe. No, when he spoke, so. his green eyes studied her intensely as if he could see inside her hole. <laughs> inside her hole? That's pretty intense. Soul. 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 Oh, my inside God. Inside her soul. <laughs> I, guess I, I thought I said inside I, her hole. I accidentally said it wrong, and I guess I wished it said that. <laughs> it would have been awesome. That would have been way better. Oh, my God. We're keeping it at home. That makes it sound more like a gynecologist situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he could see inside her hole. His chestnut hair had a hint of silver at the temples, making his the chest and nut hair. What? <laughs> his chestnut hair had a hint mm. of silver like you do. You're so beautiful. Had a hint of silver at the temples, making him appear older than his. Tw I was going to say that backwards like I had dyslexia, but I don't. You're, you're rubbing off on me. Mm -hmm. His 32 years. So he's 32 years old. All right. When he smiled, however, he seemed like a different man. <gasps> oh. uh, a man who awakened desires she swore she didn't possess. A man who could cause unfamiliar and unwanted sensations with his mere proximity. A man who could make a staunch realist like herself believe in dreams. Wow. She rarely noticed men and never felt such an all out physical attraction. Why him of all people? Because it would rich. freak out your brother. <laughs> and because it's freaky. And he's rich. Yeah, because you're like, man, a dude's suit costs more than my whole house. Freaky. I did date brothers, not at the same time, years apart. And it was slightly weird, but not weird enough to not do. So uh no, it's weird. Sorry. I did it. Mm, I did it. I'm weird as fuck, yo. Well, I fuck S sisters, so. <laughs> what? <laughs> I did it. Damn you. <laughs> At the same time? No. That would have been cool. It didn't happen. That would have been cool. All right, so we can find that out. Maybe there's sisters at like a bunny ranch. Situation. I don't know if I'd be interested in that because because they're weird. Well, yeah, dude. Right? Like, mm. How do the twins get into porn, and how are they that comfortable with each other? They've got to be weird to begin with. But how are so many weird people born beautiful? Honestly, people? man, just do you. How many people are born but so pretty but so weird? I guess twins is as close to doing you as you can get. That would be cool as fuck. I'm sorry, I don't have one. I would. Oh yeah, no, I'll probably. But see, I don't think that. I could let it happen. Maybe like a clone. It'd be weird. Clone, yes. Clone, yes. Like that Rick and Morty episode with Beth's clone. And they get freaky deaky. Oh, yeah. I yep. About that one. Yep. Everybody's thought about it. She got to do it. Pretty good. All right. So she's sitting here looking around the house, looking at these paintings. And she noticed a painting, seafoam green and turquoise hues, brought the landscape of fishing village to vivid life. Standing just offshore in waist deep water, a peasant girl cast her fishing net. The girl in the picture bore a striking resemblance to Charlie. She knew intuitively the painting was of her mother. I, I guess this is because she knows that this dude did paintings. Mm -hmm. So, like, her dad does paintings, but, like, without knowing that, like, if you didn't know that, how could you assume that? That's weird. Like, mm -mm. Uh, that's my mom. Yeah. She looks like you, Damien noticed from across the room. Noted. Eric's father painted that more than 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Damien must have sensed. What is she, a nice 26? <laughs> yeah. Damien must have sensed that the picture had a deep effect on her. He drew up alongside of her and gave her a brief history. He spent some time studying art in Algeria back in the early 60s before he married my mother. This particular village was one of his favorite spots. Now, he said he visited this before he mis visited her mother, and then he painted it 25 years ago. And if Charlie's like... 19, what, 20, 21, whatever, college? Whatever, yeah. So, I just feel like maybe it's not as much of a mistress situation as they're making it out to be. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he went back to visit her after he got married. Uh, you know? I think I maybe know. the author, what's her name, Catherine? Maybe you should like wrote this down a little bit before you like typed it up. Rework it. <clears throat> he put his hand on her arm. She jerked it away quickly and took a few steps back. What's wrong, he asked. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. Then it wasn't necessary to do it. 
Damien frowned at the anger in her voice. Did she find him distasteful? Yeah, Or had obviously. he simply frightened her? Nope. So I'll give you a heads up that she does have some trauma. Oh, yay. It comes up in the book a little bit, so we're, of course, always respectful of that. If you need help, oh, go that, get it. That kind of trauma. Yeah. So um, it's sad, but we'll move around those notes respectfully. Mm. So... He asks her if she'd like to see the rest of the house. She's like, not really. He's like, about how about other paintings? They're also by Eric's father. She's like, no. He goes, don't you like them? No. She says, my tastes run toward velvet paintings of Elvis. Which I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm on the level. A velvet painting of Elvis? I think we're definitely on Charlie's level more so than Damien's. Just saying. If anybody wanted yeah, to get to know us. Yeah, I don't want a picture us, of my we're here dad's with ex-girlfriend. <laughs> That's weird. So... Um, she's mad at him about the... Although I guess my mom is one of my dad's ex-girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, man. I don't mean, man. All it's right. weird. So, here we are elsewhere. We're at the party party, like, inside. Oh, no. They went to the house. They went to his house, the mother's house or whatever, and then now they have to drive to the party. So From they, the house? Where's right. the party? Oh, it's probably like a Chuck E. Cheese or something, huh? <laughs> yeah. The blue room of the Somerville Country Club was the <laughs> most course. opulent place Charlie had ever seen. Crystal chandeliers. Well, you've never been to a Chick- you've Ch- never been to a Chuck E. Cheese. Oh no, you're gonna say Chick Fil A. <laughs> no, you've never been to a Chuck E. Cheese. Fine china and starched white linens brought to mind the kind of social events she had seen only in movies. Although she had thought her dress was lovely when she bought it, it paled in comparison to the designer dresses the other women were wearing. She felt self conscious of the glaring difference. In her economic background. Don't do it. Don't feel bad for where you came from. Yeah. We'll so. dress in rags to the best events. Yes. Oh and when my they're God. like, y'all look crazy, we'll be like, yeah, this is like this poor, is chic, shabby. We love it. But, well, sort of. I mean, I still have the thoughts she has. I do. I do. Like that dress I wore to that one gala. I was like, this is like honky tonk bullshit. I just yeah, showed it's up crazy, wearing. But if you like I know. It's tie insane. like high waist side thistles into your hair Aww. and they're like a for real person. I know, yeah, dude, but you awesome. always love me being the like woodsy girl, but that's not what fits into these things we're mixed oh, into. Yeah. And so that's what she's feeling. Yeah. That's no, what she's okay. feeling. So I get you, Charlie. I get you. All right. We, we get you, Charlie. So um, here's the problem. Tell me. She's at the prob at the at the prom? prom damn <laughs> i was gonna say she's at the problem she's at college. the party now remember she kind of seemed like she didn't want to really be there mm-hmm. maybe the mother doesn't know about her we don't know damien sees his mother his mother sees damien damien is with charlie right okay <laughs> so happy, he sees damien she sees birthday, charlie mother then she looks at damien he says happy birthday mother <laughs> okay are you going to introduce me to your date are you gonna does he say that to his this mom? Is, no, the, he said, hi, mother, happy birthday, mother. And she said, are you going to introduce okay. me to your date? This is Charlie, this Eric's is Charlie. friend from college. Mm-hmm. My mother, Monica Lawson. Monica offered her hand, which Charlie thought momentarily to refuse. With so uh, many yeah, eyes. But I'll decide to go ahead and marry you, lady. <laughs> You're going to offer your hand this early? <laughs> I thought maybe not wasn't, but... You know what? Why you know, not? You Let's got do lots it. Of money, lady. Let's do it. I'll change my name. Yeah. It'll be Charlie Lawson once again. She didn't have the nerve to refuse, so she took her hand. It's very nice to meet you. Eric speaks of you often. Monica's smile seemed frozen on her lips. That's an unusual name for a woman. I suppose, Charlie said. Her name is Charlotte. Charlotte. It's Charlotte. <laughs> that her stupid son's answering when Charlie's Damien. like, shut the fuck up. Damien said, her name is Charlotte. Charlotte Simone, Damien said, putting a French accent on the pronunciation. Simone. A crystal wine glass shattered on the floor, commanding the attention of the entire room. Fiery red liquid splattered over the bottom of Monica's rose. <laughs> They're all drinking hot damn out of so the dress. <laughs> <laughs> And despite her well-applied makeup, her face turned a deathly shade of white charlie lowered her gaze unable to meet the horrified stare she was receiving she wished she wished <laughs> she wished the puddle on the floor were a hole she could drop herself into i wish i could fall into that hole of a puddle <laughs> all right this little scene blew any chance she had of escaping without a second thought she couldn't even move because damien had a grip on her arm Mother, are you all right? Damien's voice carried through the silent room. So a glass breaks. 
Everybody's on the same room, and he goes, Mom, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. I love Damien. <laughs> He's... All, All right. right. So Damien paced anxiously outside the ladies' room door. He was concerned for his mother's health. She'd never been a strong She's woman. She's never been around a glass breaking before. <laughs> it must have startled the shit out of her. But the, glo- the glo- ghostly look on her face was more than just a bad case of nerves. He sent one of the waitresses. She didn't know cups could break. In- <laughs> And she passed out. Oh her. my god, it died. <laughs> she just hit the ground. I've never seen anything die before. <clears throat> so, what the hell were you thinking bringing that woman here? Damien was stunned by the fury of her words. What do you mean? You told me to invite her. I never asked you to bring that tramp to my party. Tramp. She growled through the clenched teeth. You know her? Monica shook her head. I've never met her. Then what are you talking about? I knew a Just mama. get her out of here and make sure she stays out of Eric's life. Do you understand me? No, I don't. If you don't know her, why are you so upset? I don't want her kind hanging around my son. Oh, I can't wait. explain it. She'll ruin Eric's future. She'll ruin everything. Wait, is Charlie is Charlie white? I don't know, because the beginning, the front of the book, she looks like she could... I mean, is that they Charlie her mother, the front of the book? Did they say her mother was like an immigrant or something? I don't know what they said about her mom. This is her on the front of the book. She's tanned. She's got wavy, curly brown hair. Yeah, her eyes are picture. brown. She could be of some sort of other eth- ethnicity. She's not white. So her mom. She is so not white. Is Damien's mom maybe a little bit on the get their kind out of oh, here? Oh, gosh. Maybe. Maybe she's not maybe. mad at Charlie for being Charlie. Maybe she's mad at Charlie for another. I don't reason. know. I think she knows. Maybe it's like my husband ended up. <clears throat> being with somebody who was yeah. like Charlie, Shame and I didn't her. like those kind. We either. hate Monica Lawson. We I don't like. Her. I think Monica might be Monica's be a, a bitch. I think Monica might be a little racist. Fuck you, Monica. All right. Ice blue eyes stared contemptuously yeah, blue at eyes. him. I don't know. Hold on. Oh. Sh- <sighs> now I don't even know who that was. <laughs> Damien went back to the party to find Charlie, but he asked Eric where she is, and he's like, "She fucking left, bro." She left, bro. He's in the st- he's drunk at his mom's party, <laughs> wearing a sheet. All right, so um, he's kind of bitching at him for like, you just left her there with a bunch of strangers. Like, what do you expect? She's gonna go catch the fucking bus or the train or some shit. And he's like, everybody's had to do one of those. He's like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and at one point, it mentions that Eric removed Damien's hand from his sleeve and stepped back. So like, Damien keeps putting his fucking hands he's on a, people. He's a toucher. Like, you're so handsy. All right, last like chapter, last chapter of this episode. Ready, ready, ready. Of the whole, oh, you meant of the book. Of this episode, of our first installment of the Installment. Book. That's what we got to call these. Chapter three. Damien grabbed the leather jacket off the seat of the car and walked out into the cool night air. He'd never left a date to find her own way home, and he wasn't about to start now. I love it how guys always haven't done something, and they're not going to let it start now. It's going to happen. It already <laughs> happened. She's already at home. You already failed. All right. <clears throat> um, but that's why it's he, worth the wait. Yeah, he especially feels guilty because it was his fault. and Because he was having a talk <clears throat> with his mom. Mommy. As he entered the train station, he saw her huddled in a chair with her arms wrapped around her shivering body. With no other passengers around, the sound of his approaching footsteps oh, must have frightened her. Oh, she's such a little, she's a little a homeless lamb. thing. Little she thing. jumped up and moved toward the ticket window. Charlie, she raised her head slowly. What are you doing here? He held her jacket open for her. She hesitated for a moment, then slipped her arms <laughs> Come through here. the Come sleeves. cuddle me. The large silver zipper, which appeared to be so easy to fasten, gave her trembling fingers a fight. After three unsuccessful tries, she gave up and wrapped the jacket around her. So she is so cold, she can't work her hands, right, which well, was how I was. Chapter three was pretty good. With us at the No Effects concert, I was freezing. I had to wrap up in a blanket. So, the you know what? The concert was so good. I could post some concert photos on our um, social media, our Gypsy Danger, and I'll, our Bustles and Bangers social media. What? what? The concert All right. was pretty good. It was awesome. Pennywise was the best. Pennywise. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. Uh, blah 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 they're talking <clears throat> he's trying to apologize and he's trying to ask what's going on every time he attempted to bring up the subject she leaned forward and turned up the volume on the radio to tune him out so they're in the car driving every home. time so he had to oh excuse me so he had to be lowering the volume every time he tried to speak <laughs> and then yeah. she was lowering it every or time or it just or got r- louder and louder <clears throat> So, um, yeah. 
the subject he's trying to figure out is like, why the fuck did all this just happen? I know nothing. And y'all are all acting weird as fuck. Everybody knows about him. So it looks, yeah. So finally he popped in a CD of classical music and remained silent for the rest of the trip. A CD. Now, if she could just tune out the masculine scent of his aftershave, ignore the closeness of him in the luxury car, she might be able to relax. But no such luck. The drive home left her aroused, confused, and anxious to make a fast escape. So he takes her, no, he takes her home and she's going to go inside and he insists on walking her up. But then he keeps on insisting like that they are supposed to have a dinner date and insisting that she shouldn't let him go home without eating. So basically he manipulates his way into her apartment. I just love that, that, that. Um, pattern. I'm really cold. <laughs> I I I don't I don't know if I appreciate this pattern. Like I get it, but I also don't appreciate it. The pattern in these romance novels where these guys are so pushy, so manipulative. All they do is argue, and everybody hates each other. But then they get together with this hot romance. Like it doesn't last. Like I just hope all of y'all who are reading romance novels knows that when this book ends, they also like get in a fiery divorce later, or they break up in like a fiery rage. Or yeah. it's not ending well. These are not happy marriages, except for the epilogue for billionaire baby negotiation. They ended mm. happily, supposedly. Those but babies might only been like six months old, and they're wealthy, so like it won't shut last. up. It won't know? last. So anyway, two narcissists in a marriage. So he gets in there. He Maybe it'll in, work. He gets into her apartment. By the way, I'm hungry again. Do me too. I want Chinese food. She couldn't remember the last time she'd eaten Chinese food, but she had no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want. That's what I wanted last <laughs> See, that's night at the stupid. gym. I want to go to P.F. Chang's. Too. Oh, okay, yes. But Hell she yeah. had no trouble at all remembering the most expensive things on the menu. Next time. What Dan- is it with this brought to you? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Okay. Why did you get with me when I was dirt fucking poor? I'm still dirt fucking you poor. You were not dirt poor. What do you, you mean? were not. You have always paid your bills. Now, yeah, your I know, living but situation. Like, I don't no, own no anything. shut up. What? You own the car. Nope. You did. <laughs> you owned a car. Okay. All right. I don't still get these. Are like, oh, this. Look. Would they like him if he was like, hey, you want to get into my Ford Fest even? Let's go. Maybe that might have been more up her alley, but she didn't like guys at all. But here's the deal. Uh, like, oh. You constantly worked. Was there? There was never a time where you just slacked the uh, fuck off and made excuses and were a piece of shit. You worked. True. And you paid your bills. It didn't matter what your living situation y'all, y'all was. Y'all hear that, right? You paid your fucking Hell bills. Yeah. So in a way, yes, I married you for your money. Congratulations. Dang. You're a man made it. of money. I knew it. You're a money man. You're made of money, man. <laughs> I love you. You're such a sexy, rich guy in my mind. Hell yeah. I'm like, you have all the money. All I dated were losers. I'm uh, glad they set such a, such a low bar yeah. for me. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> it was easy to step right over that. Hey, you're great. Thanks. Don't put yourself down. You're no, wonderful. never. You're very high class in my book. We just high. don't have the money to be it. Oh, right? I don't think I would anyway. Yes, we would. We would be stupid. We'd be that trashy high class. What was that one movie about the guy that was married to the chick that was about to go marry Snoop Dogg or something? I don't know. Did I see that one? It wasn't Owen Wilson. It was What's His Face. And he was like, it was Beach Bum. Oh, with, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't finish Beach that bum. one. Yeah, I don't know. Now now I feel like we need to. I don't know why that might not be a correct reference, but whatever. All right, so he's ordering dinner, right? She's not going to cook. Oh, she's basically this whole time she's like, fuck you. And she like changes into sweats and all this stuff. But anyway, so uh, she orders the most expensive thing on the menu, considering herself to be sarcastic, but he ends up actually ordering it. So here's what she orders if you'd like to know. Okay. If anybody would like to Tell make me. this their next order. What's the most expensive thing on their menu? Lobster Cantonese, butterfly shrimp, shrimp and lobster sauce, shrimp fried rice, four shrimp rolls, and a large order of shrimp toast. Oh, and a pew pew platter. A pew a pew a poo poo. A poo poo platter. A pew pew. She's gonna eat all that? A poo poo platter. She's not going to. She was being sarcastic. He stood up to remove his jacket and folded it neatly over the back of the sofa. Dinner will be here in 20 minutes. So he ordered all of it. Why don't you go to your bedroom and change? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. You're in my fucking house. Why are you telling me to go change? Why? Is, what? 
<laughs> I don't like that atrocious. I literally said, what the fuck? Okay, so she's like, what bedroom? This is it, unless you count the bathroom. Dang, she has a, one of those studio places. Mm-hmm. And he's yeah. like, why not live on campus? She said, this is temporary. I graduate next month. He's like, and then what? I'll look for a job in Boston or Los Angeles or Chicago. Yep. The, the present is all I care to handle. He said, I guess you miss your parents. She said, what? Eric said you have no family. Was your father in the service? Jeez, it's the first date. I know. I know. It's, it's not, not even a date, really. Not. It was a forced knew. date. It was very... Mm. I'm not in support of this relationship. She said, I never all. met the bastard. He said, I must have misunderstood. Eric said your family moved around a lot when you were young. Right. Wait, y'all talked about that, but he didn't mention that. Oh, by the way, See, it's my sister. I mean, I skipped over some stuff, so you didn't hear their whole conversation at the bar, you know. I moved a lot from orphanages to foster families and back to orphanages. All right. So he's been firmly put in his place, but I don't know if he really knows it. Um, So she goes to change. Uh, She did not like all his questions. She changes into gray sweats. They set up this makeshift dining table. The bell rings. The food's here. Um, It's coming in these styrofoam you know, to-go plates. And mm. I just need you to know that because she says... Styrofoam? Uh, We're well, above this now. Oh, sorry, cardboard. No, no, not in the cardboard containers. He goes, why? One of my foster brothers used to keep a pet snake. Every week he'd bring home a mouse for the snake's dinner in one of those cartons, and I've never been able to eat food out of them. So she has an aversion As to cardboard containers because the snake ate out of it. But you're eating meat out of it. You're eating dead chickens. It's like the same thing. All right, so... Yeah, at some point, I think you need to let go of shit like that. Damien laughed and raised one hand to her cheek. Huh. He <laughs> <laughs> fucking pet her? Without thought, she jumped backwards and slammed into the wall. Why did... Damn, why? like a, so he touched her. She jumps back and slams yeah. into the wall. Yeah, she did. Now she's going yeah. to the hospital scene on C4. <laughs> yeah, she but like, why head. did you... Why did you why did you reach out like that? Yeah, he's like, oh. You're getting dinner ready. Oh, oh it reminded you of a mouse, a snake eating a mouse. <laughs> oh, Let me touch you. I don't get it. It's so fucking weird. Okay, I don't get this. The words. Okay, so Charlie. Oh, okay. So she's reminiscing about. Let me, be, let me say something to be very clear about all of these male characters and mm. almost every of these books. If these people didn't have money, they, could they be would doing not. This shit. Nobody would fucking like them. Yeah, I know. People don't like them anyway. They're they just have money, weird. so they're going to fake it. It's the weird ones. Oh, and money. then they get married to somebody who's faking it. So she spirals into a freak out, right? Like PTSD, okay? Yeah. we're going to be respectful She's screaming. Of it. Mm-hmm. So he yeah. he was actually very sweet and reassuring, like trying to bring her back into the present. Touching and assure her face. Her. Well, yeah, he did hold her arms, but he was like, look at me. I'm not going to hurt you. This, I, You know, he didn't know what was going on. It was like a full-blown panic attack situation. Yeah, okay. Um, so because they, he touched her face, he was going to touch her. Oh, face. he didn't touch her face. Right. She he freaked just, out. What if he was came at her? What if he was like, there's it, something behind you. I was trying to get it. There's a spider on she's the wall behind just you. Finicky. Okay. She's had some trauma. She's finicky. All right. So you don't like the wealthy very much. So they've moved on. They're in. I don't <laughs> thank you for asking. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> I might if I I'm could be somebody. one. Oh, okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's out of a point if of pure you, jealousy, just so you know. Yeah, if you want to change your opinion, if Join my opinion of you, <laughs> if you want to change my opinion of you, please just donate to our. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> come up with a charity. Don't I worry. I need to get a, a QR code or something. I have a link tree. Mm. You can send me money. You can bring me money. DM but, me and tell me you have cash on hand. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm desperate. <laughs> so <laughs> they're in a conversation. You don't like the wealthy very much. How come you don't include my brother among them? Apparently her feelings for Eric could still make her smile. Eric is different. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty. I'll bet you didn't know that he wanted to be a paleontologist. Eric's so dinosaur cool. doctor. He's so cool. Eric wants to be a dinosaur doctor. When he hears that. You want to know why he's not? Because there's no dinosaurs to doctor. He really liked the movie Jurassic Park. Of course. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> Classic. Great right. movie. So she also tells him that like Eric doesn't want to marry that lady and mm. you keep telling him what to do. Oh, and he also is supposed to go work for Damien at some like 
company, and he doesn't want to do that either. And Damien is feeling guilty. So about he's trying to cuckold fucking Eric basically. with Charlie, but then he's gonna Eric's gonna be like, "Hey, no. uh, Damien, I have a surprise for you for everybody. In fact, everybody come in, Mom, Dad. We're related. Charlie's your sister." <laughs> <laughs> Like one of those, one of those gender reveal things. And <clears> yeah, <laughs> shoots them right in the right, right it's in the, the face. The color of that. disappointment. <laughs> Brian, yeah. <dude. laughs> All right, so he feels like guilty because he's like, did he just assume Eric wanted to marry Cynthia Farnsworth? Right. They keep using her first <clears throat> and last fucking name. Still, we're in. The I want to marry Cynthia Farnsworth. <laughs> she sounds great. <laughs> her and Martin Buchanan are probably hitting it off. <laughs> yeah, she's had an affair already. <laughs> All right, Martin Buchanan is from uh, Two Timing Man, by the way. If you want to catch up, go back and listen. All right. Um, so they are eating and drinking now. She had that's beer. about time. She had beer in her fridge. She offered it to him, but she doesn't drink. And so well, he beer in her fridge. She he drink. finished the last of his beer and popped the top on the second one. No, Charlie put her hand on the aluminum can. I will not let you drive home after drinking two of those. Is that a fact? So he chugged it? Fuck yes, dude. <laughs> Damien swallowed the entire can of beer without stopping for Hell a breath. Yeah. He had no idea why he pulled such a juvenile stunt, except that he suddenly... Uh, because you just said that I get to stay here if you... Uh, uh, reward time. Checking this down. Three, so, four, and five are getting ready to follow quickly behind this. <laughs> when he finished, he placed the can on the table and flashed a smile at her. Then I guess you'll have a house guest for the night. Patches of red crept up her cheeks as she clenched her fingers tightly into trembling fists. You lousy snake, I'm going to toss you out the door anyway. That would make you responsible for my driving in a less than sober state. As Narcissist. a bartender, you know that. <laughs> and Eric would never forgive you. Call a cab. He said, I don't carry cash on me. You're such an idiot. I don't even have a spare mattress. You'll have to sleep on the cold, hard floor. Suffering is good for the soul. That's not suffering. It's hell. By the time I open this couch. Sleeping on the only, floor? Yeah. So Dad do that every Thursday. Wah, wah, wah. She's sleeping on the couch, though. She, she s- hates the floor more. I can't tell you how many times I woke up on the floor. So she's pissed, but she lets him stay. And after they ate, she cleared away the dishes. He smiled as she transferred the food into plastic storage containers. She treated the leftovers with the same care that he treated a new client. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> what does uh, that may mean? May I take you out to dinner leftovers? And put and you in a plastic box put and you in a seal plastic the box. fucking lid? Does he a fucking serial killer? Like, what does that mean? Are you killing them? And well, he's already a weirdo, Cutting clearly. them up and eating them? You're cannibal? Maybe. You know, if we could find a romance novel. That is about eating people? It, no, I'm just saying, like, if anybody out there has some, some romance novels that are about freaky scary shit that might be cool yeah recommendations are always welcome yeah all right i'm just looking for something to we get the blood smut, pumping man. We yeah well I, I listen everybody after this book i really am thinking about reading this weird ass sci-fi one i really am thinking about reading inside oh, out next no. i'm gonna do it i think i'm gonna do it i think we need to spin we need something mm-hmm. interesting you and told weird. Me about it that one's gonna be bad so y'all there's this next book inside out and it's a little bit sci-fi a little bit like heaven hell themed um there's actual demons it's weird as fuck it's still up in the air whether it gets sexual or not, but there's sexual themes through the whole you, thing. You're talking too much about it. I'm not going to. I'm just telling you it's general thing, like getting you hyped up for it. It's Listen like to a, the next Like thing. an advertisement for our next episode. Exactly. Exactly. So mm. stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You only so, have like 16 more hours. Yeah. Until. But here's the, this is the literal last of this book. Ready? The literal last. Yeah. Well, right. of this episode. Of, of this the book. installment. <sighs> Since she had made no effort to make him leave, he had hoped that she had begun to feel comfortable in his presence. This is not part of the the book, but alas, she did not. She did not. So she was very uncomfortable with him staying there, and I'll, that's what I'll say. She You're right, because this is the first very, time they've ever met. Huh? And she's been freaking out every time he touches her. So she, clearly she has an aversion to men, like in that one book we read for our live event. You yeah, know? okay. So um, she says goodnight. 
He laid his head back on the pillow and stared into the darkness. He couldn't believe he was spending the night on a kitchen floor. Then again, he couldn't think of one. Go home. (laughs) Fuck, you're grown. Get the fuck out of here. Call a cab, you dumbass. One logical explanation for any of his behavior since he'd walked into that campus bar the night before. He was too old for juvenile stunts and too young for a midlife crisis. Uh, Yeah, there you are laying on the fucking floor. So what the hell was happening to his orderly, well-planned life? But you know what? I will tell Uh, you something. Get up and walk off. I you will have, tell you something. I, I where's your a, gold card, my I guy? I had a moment like this in my life that I'm not proud to, to talk about, but I will say that I've done something like this. What's up on the floor? I went to stay with a boyfriend who lived with other people, and there was really no other. I think we might have had a blow-up mattress. Were but you it poor? Was, but I was. You were. He's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so ashamed. All he's got to do is get up and walk out. But he's like, I can't because I made a Bye. challenge. And she was like, well, fuck you. If you drink more, you can't leave. And he's like, well, we'll challenge that. <laughs> so he chugged him. And then she's like, well, you can't leave. And now you he's made like, the choice. Now lay Well, in now it. you're going to have to. You made your floor. Now lay yeah, on it. Yeah, you made your floor. Now sleep <laughs> on it. Well, anyway, so that was the, the end of the first installment of the Worth the Wait book. Every time we read a book, I find a character I hate worse than the previous character. One? I don't like Damien. All right. Okay. Who do, who's your favorite? In this book? Yeah. Damien's mom. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you people. <laughs> Get that trap out of here. <laughs> oh, my lift. <clears throat> so, I guess Yeah, my she favorite... freaked out of the, the glass breaking. That was heartbreaking. That broke, when the glass broke, my heart broke. I'll tell you that my favorite is Eric. And I don't like Eric. I like Eric. I haven't even heard of him. He's Eric's just getting drunk. Eric's a jaded this whole time. younger brother. He doesn't like his family. He doesn't want to do it. I understand I have, that. And I he's haven't. not a wiener like Charlie. We Charlie's, don't know that. We're Charlie three, sounds gangster because she works at a bar, but she is a wiener. We've only met, we've only been three chapters into this. Unless you've read. I'm just saying, those are my choices. All right. But anyway, I love you. What? Well, me? Yeah. Well, I love you too. All right. Well, I'll see you next one. No, you're going to see me here all week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. If you want more where this came from, follow, like, and subscribe. We're on Insta and TikTok at Bustles and Bangers. Or you can find us personally on Insta and TikTok at Gypsy Danger 317.